Hello, and welcome to the eTech Podcast with me, your host, Ryan Morn. I have been involved in the development of electrified vehicles and machines since 2005 as an engineer and a business leader. This podcast is the product of my passion for electric and autonomous vehicle technology. I'm here to share knowledge from some of the world's leading experts, as well as my own insights. Join me as we accelerate the transition to cleaner, safer and smarter vehicles and grow the industry around the world. After doing a lot of interviews, we're returning a bit to our roots today and bringing you an answer to a question we've been asked several times in the last few weeks. We do have more interviews on the way, but thought this would make an interesting episode. Uh, So basically, the question is, we keep being asked, what's all the fuss about 800 volt powertrains? Not quite like that all the time, admittedly, but it's something that's been in the press uh, recently. We've had several questions through on the same topic pretty much all at once. Um, So we decided to make it into an episode. Uh, The context of this has been, I think the the Hyundai Kia recently announced a launch of a new EV. Um, This is a a high performance vehicle and they've made much of the new car's ability to charge very, very quickly using the latest 350 kilowatt ultra chargers. In order to deliver this, Hyundai Kia revealed that the car would use an 800 volt electrical architecture. Um, so this is not the uh, the first manufacturer to talk about 800 volt systems. Porsche uh, feature this technology in the Taycan. Fisker have announced it already in their upcoming eMotion, uh, amongst others. Um, and there, there are more and more out there that have either announced it um, or have vehicles using it in typically low volumes and in quite specialist applications. Um, So it's not the first, but it has been quite high profile. And I think what's different about the Hyundai Kia announcement is rather than it being some very special car like the Taycan or the Rimac, uh, this is more kind of mainstream high performance vehicle from a a much, much more mainstream manufacturer. Um, So, you know, we're being asked what can the 800 volt system do um, and, uh, and, and why is it important? The first question to answer here is why would you go to 800 volts? Uh, so there really, there's three elements to this. There's three elements to answer this question. All come from the same basic principle, and it's what's known as dual heating, or sometimes called ohmic losses. So this comes from Joule's first law, uh, and I love the fact that uh, the famous English physicist James Joule discovered this in his quest to develop more efficient ways to make beer. What a fantastic guy. So uh, hats off to you, Mr. Joule. Um, So Joule's first law says that the power lost as heat in an electric conductor is proportional to its resistance multiplied by the square of the current flowing through the conductor. So that probably sounds pretty wacky. Uh, It's definitely much easier if you write it down, and I will put some things in the show notes on that. Uh, Basically, the amount of current flowing through a conductor is really important in terms of uh, the losses that you generate in that conductor. So we can see that if we reduce the amount of current flowing through a conductor, even by a little bit, because the heat generated is a function of the square of the current, so the, the current times the current, um, it gives us a bigger benefit. So it's not a one-to-one relationship. If we can, we can half it, we get a much bigger uh, improvement. And the next important rule is that electric power equals volts times current. So for a given amount of electrical power, if we double the voltage, we half the current. And if we half the current and go back to the dual uh, heating, we can uh, imp- reduce the dual heating by a factor of four. So that's that's amazing, and, and, and it's worth doing, and it's a key driver through through all of this. And in almost all electrical devices, the ability to manage and reject unwanted heat is one of the key limiting factors to performance, particularly in electric vehicles, where we're trying always to package relatively high power electrical machines, traction motors, power conversion devices, etc., into very, very small and lightweight packages. So... What are the three main elements driving 800 volt powertrains? Well, the first one is probably quite obvious. It was part of the question or the introduction to the question in the first place. But the first one is ultra fast charging. So 
fast charging is one of the key kind of drivers in the EV industry. You know, people want to improve the utility and functionality of electric vehicles. And a big part of that is making them faster to recharge, you know, um, not maybe well, I'm saying not trying to compete. Actually, I do think it is part of trying to compete and develop a proposition which is competitive with a, a fossil fueled vehicle. People want to be able to recharge uh, faster and faster. And that's, I think that's particularly an important characteristic in high-end premium luxury vehicles. So the latest ultra-fast chargers that are coming out onto the market, so there are some of these are installed already throughout Europe, throughout the US, are rated at 350 kilowatts peak power. 350 kilowatts, that's a huge amount of power. Um, basically, they would have the capability to charge a big 100 kilowatt electric car battery in less than 25 minutes. So really fast charging of, of uh, big battery packs there from these new ultra chargers. But in order to reach this charging power and still have manageable cables and connectors to uh, connect the charger up to the vehicle, the voltage has been increased to 800 volts. So, so this is a key, key driver. So uh, this comes from the fact that, you know, the power is volts times the current. So increasing, um, increasing the voltage means we can reduce the current. And then the, uh, the heating in the cables and the connectors. So basically this is a really important element of how we size the cables and size connectors in, uh, in industry is to deal with the amount of current. So current is much more important when you're sizing cables and connectors um, than voltages. And um, having that higher voltage means we can have lower current and it makes the cables and connectors um, more manageable and, and to be frank, feasible. I think at 400 volts, trying to do 350 kilowatts, um, you'd end up with uh, some, some quite severe heating in the cable. You'd have to end up with very large cables uh, and, and very large connectors. So it's, it, you know, ultra fast charging, it's arguably a luxury in electric cars. Uh, I've got to admit, I do still charge my electric car with a good old three kilowatt granny lead. Um, so not quite uh, thinking about 350 kilowatt charging for most of, of um, how we use our, our electric car, certainly. Um, so I think it's, it's probably a luxury for some applications. But when we move out of passenger vehicles and we start looking at uh, things like trucks and buses, you know, that ability to charge quickly with much larger battery packs so uh, you know a truck or a bus might be a 200 kilowatt hour or a 300 kilowatt hour or even a 600 kilowatt hour battery pack you know these are huge huge battery packs and we need the ability to charge them in uh, realistic amounts of time so actually 350 kilowatts would be a necessity for commercial vehicles and you, you could be uh, looking in the future at even higher um, charging powers for commercial vehicles and there's there's lots of challenges and uh, things to solve there so that is the number one thing driving 800 volt powertrain, ultra fast charging. The next thing, so the number two, uh, and these aren't necessarily in order of priority, by the way, but uh, uh, you can know, take, take the, the, I would say order um, doesn't, doesn't mean anything in terms of how they're coming out here. Because the number two thing I've got here is higher efficiencies. So pushing higher currents around the EV powertrain creates dual heating in every single component that that current passes through from the battery right through to the traction motor and higher currents mean bigger cables and bigger connectors to carry them safely around the vehicle and that means more weight in the vehicle so by going to a higher voltage we can reduce the current which means that we can reduce the size of the cables and the connectors and all the conductors in the system but it also means that we can reduce the ohmic losses and reduce the the heating in the system uh, as a result so um, less heat uh, in the motor windings means less cooling system power needed in pumps and fans to take it away from the powertrain. Um, we also have a sort of side issue here, but ohmic losses are worse at higher frequencies. And that's because of something called skin effect. And I'm not going to go into what skin effect is here. Um, but basically, at high frequencies, um, ohmic losses get worse because effectively the, the sort of cross-sectional area that uh, the current sees in, in the conductor is reduced. Uh, now, high frequency switching, high frequency switching is being used in power conversion devices to reduce weight and size and, and high speed or high frequency traction motors are being used to improve power density in the traction systems. So you, you might have seen people talk about things like silicon carbide switching devices. So we've done a few podcasts on power electronics um, with uh, with on semiconductor. That was a great power uh, podcast. If you ha have a look for that in show histories, if you're interested, or um, with our own uh, expert uh, Tim Easton, and we were talking about high 
um, high speed switching devices, so silicon carbide switching devices. And the reason why you would use uh, these high, high frequency, uh, more efficient switching devices is you can push the frequency, switching frequency up in your power conversion devices, which means you can reduce the size of um, other components in those devices. So your inductors and your, your link capacitors and all that kind of thing. So um, going to high, higher frequencies um, and at higher rotational speeds in, in motors is a good way to improve overall power density, but ohmic losses will be worse. So going to higher voltages um, in these high frequency devices is great because it helps to offset um, some of what you're losing in, in terms of uh, additional ohmic losses. So in the quest for higher efficiency in EV powertrains, Going to 800 volts is a key tool, I would say, uh, particularly if your powertrain is very highly loaded, like a high performance vehicle or in a commercial vehicle. Um, so that's that's the second thing. And, f and final thing here. So the third part of this is kind of connected to what I've been talking about, but I think it's a, a separate uh, issue here. Higher performance. So this is kind of the opposite end of the telescope from higher efficiency, but in an EV, uh, very, very closely related. So you know, it's one of the nice things with an EV in a in an internal combustion engine car. You know, higher performance vehicle typically means less efficient, uh, more losses, big snorty fire breathing engine and all that. But in an EV, you know, high performance means putting electrons to use most efficiently in our traction machines and power conversion devices, um, and and using the the power and the weights most effectively. So to get a high performance powertrain uh, in an EV, we want it as light and as power dense as possible. And that, uh, that will mean using a lot of the tools to uh, reduce component size and weight that I've already mentioned. And reducing uh, the current by using a higher voltage is part of this. So delivering a high performance EV powertrain with high power density. And again, that could be a high performance vehicle like a passenger car or in a commercial vehicle where you want a high, high performance, high power density powertrain. Uh, in order to maximize your payload capacity of the vehicle. <clears throat> so high performance requirements are an, another key driver to going to uh, to 800 volts. Um, so where would you not go for 800 volts? Because there are going to be many, many applications where 800 volts is simply not necessary. Um, so I don't think that every single electric vehicle on the market will have 800 volts in a, in a couple of years' time. I think there's going to be a place in the market for lower voltage architectures uh, still, High voltage, 800 volt systems will have their place. I think in commercial vehicle applications, we're going to see even higher voltages start to come through. Um, so people working on some 1200 volt uh, systems now, and that goes back to the charging uh, speeds I was talking about before. You know, if we're into like megawatt power chargers, actually we're going to want to to increase certainly the charge voltage again. So um, so 800 isn't necessarily the uh, the final destination, um, but uh, you know expect further developments and even higher voltages coming in the future for all all of the same reasons. So in a kind of lower performance passenger vehicle application, uh, we don't have such tight packaging constraints or such a, a high kind of performance uh, level requirement. And particularly if you're not looking to do ultra fast charging, which is an awful, awful lot of applications. You know, if, if, if it's a kind of city car, not designed for kind of long speed driving, I, re I really don't think that um, ultra fast charging is uh, is necessary. And you can still plug a 400 volt architecture car into one of these 800 volt uh, ultra chargers. It just, the, the ultra charger goes, ah, I'm not connected to an 800 volt car. I will output a, a lower voltage instead. The car tells it what voltage to give it. Um, and it will not charge at the full power, but you'll still be able to get a charge at whatever the maximum charge rate that your vehicle uh, can deal with is. So it's still, you know, infrastructure is still uh, still open to you. So, so those lower performing applications, um, city cars, smaller cars, um, where there's a you know, huge amount of work going on at the moment in terms of electrification, will not necessarily all end up at 800 volts. Uh, where we will see a lot of 800 volt architectures appearing is on high performance passenger vehicles where charge speed is critical and high power density is also critical. And also in heavy duty commercial vehicles where again, faster charging speeds are, are important because it gives more vehicle uptime and, and reduced uh, powertrain current gives an improvement in overall range and efficiency of the commercial vehicle. And that's one of the really big uh, factors on, on commercial vehicles, actually probably much more so than it is on uh, on a passenger car. And, you know, to that end, it, it hasn't really been made a big deal of in, in the announcements, but most of the new high performance commercial vehicles that we're starting to see come on the market now are using uh, 800 volt architecture. So there's a lot of component development um, in that uh, space going on in the background. 
And another part of the question that we've been asked on that component development is what are the key differences between the 800 volt components and a 400 volt equivalent? So, you know, these new vehicles that are coming out, what are the differences between the components in the powertrain and uh, and uh, the components in a, in a more typical EV powertrain? And um, fundamentally a lot, you know, the, the, the ratings of all of the components have to be different. So all the power switching devices, which are typically rated to a maximum operating voltage, um, so the, the ones that are used in a 350, 400 volt system won't be rated to a high enough voltage, so they would break. Um, so we need new power switching devices. Uh, we'll need higher rated connectors. We'll need higher rated electrical insulation. Uh, the the power electronics design will need to be different in order to accommodate um, different design um, creep and clearance factors. Um, so all of that needs to be updated to deal with the, the higher voltages. So very, very significant um, component development. And that, and that can be um, a major downside to uh, going to 800 volt architecture. You you may be having to develop new componentry um, to, to meet the requirements at that voltage. And all the, the manufacturers have all got different uh, requirements. So if you've already got off the shelf 400 volt components, it's going to be a very significant undertaking at the moment um, to go to an 800 volt powertrain. So that would be a, a pretty big reason to not do it, um, or, or, although some people are clearly seeing the benefits in doing it. And of course, some of the components will be the same. Um, so people might not realize, but for example, the same battery cells can be used in the battery pack. They're just arranged differently um, with a, diff a, a double number of cells in series, basically, and half in half the number in parallel. So you'd have the same number of cells in a pack, but arranged differently, um, and that would make up a, a pack of a higher voltage, um, but and a lower amp hour uh, capacity, but uh, the same uh, kilowatt hour capacity. So um, some of the battery hardware, of course, will carry across with that, uh, which isn't dependent on the overall pack voltage. But again, key components will need to be updated to deal with these higher voltages. Um, so connectors and, and other parts of the uh, sensing system in the battery pack and the control system in the battery pack would have to be updated. So it is a huge undertaking. It's a very significant undertaking going to 800 volts, but it, it really is uh, It's worth it for these higher performance and, and uh, heavy duty applications. So uh, that's... That is it. Uh, hopefully I've managed to answer the question for people who were interested. Um, we've covered all the key points there. So um, 800 volt architecture it is a big thing. Lots of EVs will be adopting that, uh, particularly the higher performance type and the heavy duty type. Um, the, the reason for it is because um, we can reduce the current flowing through our conductors and through our devices in the vehicle. And uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Jewell and his uh, attempt to make beer in a more efficient way, we know that reducing the current is really, really important in terms of uh, reducing the, the heat loss in uh, conductors, cables and motors and, and power devices. Um, and in, in our sort of ongoing quest for very fast charge speeds, higher vehicle efficiencies and high performance powertrains. These are really important, uh, really, really important features. So I think that's answered the question. If you don't think I've answered the question, feel free to uh, to, to send me a comment and uh, ask me for more information. Or, you know, uh, if you have a question on another topic, more than happy to see those questions. Really, really appreciate them coming in. Keep the feedback coming in on the show. We've had some great reviews recently. I really, uh, really appreciate those. It helps to uh, to keep us focused, keep us going in producing um, this uh, this podcast where we're trying to share as much knowledge and information as we can about electric vehicle powertrains and and bring you amazing interviews with real experts in the industry um, who who know their stuff and, and are prepared to uh, to share the, the wealth of their experience uh, widely through uh, through through the podcast. So yeah, keep keep the comments coming, keep the ratings coming. Don't forget to subscribe to the show if you haven't already. I know some people haven't subscribed to the show and they just rely on uh, the postings that we do on LinkedIn or Facebook to give them an update. Uh, just hit subscribe. You'll get updates uh, to the show. If you're interested, you could head across to our YouTube channel. We've got some great videos and other things on there as well. Um, obviously, podcast, uh, you don't get to, uh, to see things, um, but we do have some good videos covering uh, a lot of topics uh, across on our YouTube channel. And we also put the podcasts up there. So thank you very much for taking the time to, uh, to listen to me today. Um, I hope you've uh, got some value out of that. Um, and I really look forward to being able to speak to you again soon.